Okay, just because I want Austin to be able to go back and to check it online. So ladies and gentlemen, what they're asking us to do, what we've talked about so far, is we've talked about four different kinds of functions. All right, and Cody, this will be a great review for you. What we have is there's the first function, which we call the constant function. If we set our function equal to number. So that could have been a horizontal line, right? If you could say f of x equals um, a, a number. Or we had the identity function, which looked like this. We had the absolute value function, which looked like that. And then we had talked about the quadratic function, which looked like that. Those are kind of some rough sketches of them. But there's four different types that we talked about. The constant, the identity, the absolute value, and the quadratic. Correct. So what we need to do is we need to determine which one is this. Okay. Well, obviously, we can see that we have these two bars here, which represent absolute value, right? So this function is going to be an absolute value function. And that's going to become very helpful when we want to go ahead and graph. All right. So we know it's an absolute value function. So we need to know what the parent graph is. Yes, Cody. Uh, why does that make a question about the function you put right there that you got Is that f of x equals c? Yeah, c is a constant. So it could be any number, like f of x equals 5. Um, and that would have been a horizontal line, which we were talking Equal to x. Yes? A vertical line would be like when x equals, like if x equals 5 or x equals negative 2. That would be a vertical line. But it's not, but remember, vertical lines are not functions, right? That's why we, we can graph vertical equations, but we can't graph vertical functions. Because remember, if it's a vertical line, it can't pass the vertical line test. What uh, Quadratic. It was that U-shape. Do you not have the worksheet? I have the worksheet for you. It's, it's right in those worksheets. OK. Um, <clears throat> so here's what we have with this. Now, the next thing that was also on that worksheet is we talked about the transformations, right? If you <clears throat> remember, we talked about adding and subtracting inside the function shifted the graph left or right, adding or subtracted outside the function, shifted the graph up or down. Am I adding or subtracting any numbers inside or outside of this function? No. no. I'm actually multiplying by negative 1, right? So then there's two types of functions we looked at. If I have, <clears throat> if I take my f of x and I have f of x, um, if I multiply, I'm sorry, if I take my function and I multiply inside of the function by negative 1, that told me I was going to have a reflection. <clears throat> yes. If I have my function and I multiply it by negative 1, okay, that is going to also be a reflection, but they're going to be of different types. So any variable has a negative reflection? No, listen to me. Let's take a look at here. What's our function right here? What's the absolute value function? y equals absolute value of x. That is the function, right? So if I multiply, if I multiply negative x inside my function, it's going to look like this. So now it'd be, so um, it looked like this: absolute value of negative x, right? So when you have a reflection multiplied in, so when you multiply by negative inside your inside your function, it is a reflection about. Does anybody know the x or the y axis? It's the y axis. Okay, and if you multiply a negative times your function, which this looks like it is, right? It's your function multiplied by a negative one. That's a reflection of your x-axis. But I'm saying, like, yes, kind of yes. I mean, we're going to look at different functions that are going to have more than one transformation, and you'll kind of see how what I'm kind of talking about. But yes, when it's inside the function, when it's in when you're multiplying by a negative inside the function, you're reflecting about the y. And you're, when you're multiplying by it outside the function, you reflect about the y. This was already in your notes. We already wrote down. We spent time with this, with the x, yes. Yeah, so, basically it's so all we're doing is we're just flipping it. So when I asked you guys to graph this on your homework quiz, I said, graph, tell me what it is, graph the parent graph, and then show me the reflection. First thing you guys need to know is the parent graph has a slope of up 1 over 1. So you guys need to understand that it goes up 1 over 1. That's a reflection. And then if I was going to graph now the reflection, all it simply is is this graph reflected over the x-axis, which is right here. So now that is 
f of x equals negative absolute value of x, as this is f of x equals absolute value of x. Make sense? Real quick, yes? Good point. I was just about to say that. Let's do that. So <clears throat> what would it look like? If I take this graph and I flip it over the y-axis, so it it's the same thing, right? I thought that I thinking, yep. No, you're right. You say the same thing. right. Now, that doesn't happen for all of them. But what you guys will notice is absolute value and quadratic they're what we call, since you can flip it over that y-axis and it's remain the same, we can call it symmetrical about <clears throat> the y-axis. You guys remember talking about symmetry and geometry, right? So since you can flip it over the y-axis, it's symmetrical about the y-axis. Okay? There you go. That's one. Okay.